Great. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming out uh, this evening. Uh, my name is Ryan Sorensen. I have the pri privilege of being the mayor of Sheboygan. Um, I know everyone has just been thinking about summer. Um, that's why we wanted to come out here today as we're in the dead of uh, February right now. Um, okay, I was hoping for a laugh. That was supposed to be a, a laugh line, but no, no, it's all good. Um, no, in all seriousness, thanks for coming out. We have an awesome opportunity here uh, for the city of Sheboygan to start hosting um, an international powerboat racing uh, competition uh, right here on the shores of Sheboygan. Now, if some folks have remembered, there have been there's been something like this way back before my time um, in Sheboygan again, so we're happy to kind of get this back on the radar um, as well. But we're, we're really excited and want to just get some feedback and inform the folks and the public uh, about what this means will mean for the community, a lot of different agencies um, across, uh, across the community as well too. This is a great opportunity that is just another great example of Sheboygan and the capacity that we have to host uh, large, scale, large scale sporting events. A lot of folks know NASCAR at Elkhart Lake, uh, the Ryder Cup, PGA, a lot of golf, golf stuff too, but now uh, another great water activity as well too. So uh, we have some of our friends from P1 on uh, online as well as uh, Stuart here from Mercury Racing, our friends uh, right down uh, the street on 23 from Fond du Lac. Uh, we'll share a little bit more about uh, just uh, why they chose Sheboygan, what we're looking to do moving forward in, in August. Obviously that this is going to be a big event on the water so news flash, yes, it's gonna be a busy weekend. Um, it will be a lot of people here, but we're excited to put Sheboygan on the map. We wanna make sure that everyone, uh, no matter what entity you're part of, the marina, hotel, restaurant, shop, whatever, that you take full advantage of this opportunity uh, for Sheboygan um, and just kind of, in, um, and, and just take advantage of this great opportunity, what it'll mean for the community. So um, we'll, we'll kind of uh, start just with some, some presentations and then towards the end, we'll do a quick, uh, Q&A and ask uh, what questions we're, we might be able to, to answer. Now we just totally recognize that we're not a, we might not have all the answers to all the questions just yet, uh, but it will help uh, us in the planning process moving forward as well too. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. If anyone needs to use the restroom, feel free to step out. They're right over here on this side of uh, City Hall. So thanks so much. I'll turn it over to Stuart. Uh, just say some few welcoming words and we'll turn it over to some of our uh, friends online here. So thanks again. Hello everyone and uh, thanks for coming out. So I'm Stuart Halley, General Manager of Mercury Racing. I've been uh, up in Wisconsin and at Mercury for 30 years and i um, really excited to uh, uh, have an opportunity to kind of uh, float this plan that we've been uh, brewing. So Mercury Racing is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. So 1973 in the middle of a cornfield up in Techita, the, the old man as we call him, Carl Kike for he and his son kind of created this uh, this business. Um, it's it's merged through the years. We uh, we've worked. Uh, we've had a few different brands. KK for Aeromarine is part of our history. Mercury Precision Products, and all those have kind of evolved uh, evolved into a big melting pot of uh, uh, a company that likes to innovate uh, engineering solutions for marine products, and uh, we like to basically supply product to. Um, customers that like to be seen and like to kind of have that, they have that high performance gene. So our business started out supplying products to race teams and over the 50 years we've transitioned probably, there were some couple milestone events in probably 2010, we came out with an engine called the QC4 which is, uh, it's a nine liter or twin turbocharged V8 that makes uh, 1,350 horsepower in the original version and people have liked to use that on something called poker runs where they go out in social events and uh, meet with their friends and they go to uh, different places for lunch and, and that and then at the end of the day they get up, um, they've accumulated a poker hand, whoever wins, um, basically the charities win because every one of these events is basically a, a local charity that benefits from veterans to just, you know, just different things, children's hospitals. Um, then again in 15, 2015, we introduced an outboard that again has kind of really grown this market. So we have four events planned for this year. Our, our first one is next week down at Miami Boat Show where we're gonna be launching a new product and kind of teeing up our whole year. And then we have another event in Charleston, South Carolina. And, um, and then this one that really is 
kind of a big one to me is the, our heritage. You know, we started in powerboat racing, and we want to really kind of uh, bring notice back. It's, it's one of the most emotional sports to me, and it just doesn't have the following of NASCAR or IndyCar or Formula One. So we have a lot of partnerships um, that we've been developing, and you'll get to hear from two people tonight um, from two really great organizations, uh, P1 Offshore. Uh, Michelle's going to talk uh, a little bit uh, later on, and then I think Tim Siebold, which if you know Powerboat Racing, Siebold's a very famous name uh, based out of St. Louis. And, uh, and I'm lucky because next week at our event down in Miami, I get to see D. Bill Seabolt and Michael Seabolt, and of course I see Tim all the time. But uh, you know, it's a really, it's a really cool little niche group. Um, but I've uh, been here 30 years. I love Sheboygan. I've stimulated the economy. Um, we're looking to really stimulate the economy with this weekend in August. And uh, you know, um, we want to work through it. If there's any, you know, any issues, definitely we want to understand what the, the roadblocks are. But when we first started looking, we looked, uh, you know, Chicago, Milwaukee, Manitowoc, and we, and you know, I, I've been familiar. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, but uh, anyway, that's for another discussion. But I mean, what a great location, the Blue Harbor. I mean, it's, it's what's really nice about this location is people can park a car. And then, it, you know, the Blue Harbor is central location. The offshore course will be right off um, Lake Michigan and then the protected water for the circuit racing. So we're bringing, the idea behind this event is to bring the top classes. We're, not, we're only bringing the top classes. And that's three offshore race categories, which will race in the big water in Lake Michigan. And then the, uh, the circuit racing um, group, which is... Uh, they're, they need more calmer water than big off what, shore water, so that triangular area you have will work out great. Tim will show you that. And then what I'm really excited about is we have a new project we're working with, a group out of uh, Europe called E1 Series. They've done electric uh, power series before. They've done the Formula E, a car racing series, Extreme E, and now they're doing something called E1. There's a, a boat called the Race Boat, the Race Bird. It is a hydrofoiling electric powered boat, and we do the power for that, and that boat will be here in August um, as a demonstration. And its inaugural racing series will be in Saudi Arabia in December. So you guys will see it, you know, first time in the U.S. Um, but pretty cool event. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Tim Seabolt, who will kind of go through everything. Tim, you might be on mute. Michelle or Tim, can can either of you try to unmute and talk? We can't hear anything. Thoughts, Scott? We can't hear you yet. Scott, can we log in as our, our own user and just put it next to the mic? So we can't, if you, we can see your mouse moving. I don't know if you guys, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. So just a minute till we can. Can you say something now, Tim? Can you hear me now? 
Yes, we can. Go ahead. Ah, perfect. Well, hello. My name is Tim Siebold with the Formula One Powerboat Championship. We are one of the partners, along with P1 Offshore, um, conducting this uh, joint venture with Mercury Racing to celebrate their 50th anniversary. We're very excited to return to Sheboygan. Um, actually, I've never raced there, but my father years ago raced in uh, Sheboygan. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great return. This is a fantastic setting on the riverfront of Sheboygan because we can showcase not only the offshore boats that will run in the bigger water, but also the circuit boats that will run in the harbor along with the E1 uh, exhibition uh, that will be seen the first time in the United States showcased at the uh, Sheboygan event and then uh, possibly a, um, another drag boat exhibition. So we're very excited. If uh, we can bring up the presentation, we'll, I think uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. So we can actually show our vision of um, what we are going to do. So we're, we are combining the best of the best for the Mercury 50th anniversary, showcasing the best talent in both circuit racing, which is the boat on the left, and the offshore racing in three categories, uh, four categories, uh, which is the boats on the right. So we will have class one, which is the, the biggest, um, fastest boats uh, in the offshore series, down to the super stocks with the 300R Mercury Racing uh, twin engines, uh, which will be probably the, the, the slowest class in offshore at this particular event. So we're bringing up the site plan so we can give you, give you an overall view of what we are envisioning uh, to bring not only for the racers, but also the, the thousands of spectators that will visit and uh, partake in this festivities. So we've, as you, as you can see, we've got the offshore racing um, circuit uh, to the lower right, the circuit boats in the harbor, uh, which is that triangle um, on the upper right. And then we'll have um, VIP area, um, hopefully uh, with the, the completion of the pier construction. Um, so that way we'll be able to see both race uh, circuits from one VIP area. And then throughout the harbor, uh, we'll have pit area, we'll have uh, some vendors in town, and we're looking to do also uh, the, a street party um, on Friday night. So the block party is something where we display the boats for the fans to get right up close and personal, not only with the boats, but also with the teams. So they'll be able to meet the drivers, they'll get autographs signed, and it's a fantastic way to kick off the event, showcasing the, the powerful hardware that Mercury Racing produces uh, and we use for our racing boats. So this is, uh, usually it'll last um, three or four hours uh, and the public's invited because we, you know, it's for them. And we, we are going to determine the final site when we come on our site visit at the end of February. Right now, the two possible locations is on the street. Uh, they're you can see them uh, outlined in blue or, uh, and I'm sorry, um, I can't hardly see it from here, but the, um, where the amphitheater is, I, I, I think is the name of it, um, towards the top of the page. So we wanted to give you a little insight to what we're thinking um, 
for the pits. So the uh, peach area you'll notice is where the, the boats will be staged for the weekend. We've got some overflow areas uh, in the grassy area to the top. And then um, for the marina, we will have access in and out uh, with some parking um, up by the uh, marina building. So with the offshore boats, we put them in by crane because most of them are too big to put use on the ramp. So a lot, most of those boats will be launched by crane and the formula boats will be launched by uh, trailer. So we'll be using the boat ramps, not only for launching the boats, but also for any um, water evacuation that we may need to do uh, from on the water. So this will give you a little bit better idea of which boats will be staged where. So we've got um, the different offshore boats and the circuit boats all being encompassed in the, in the same area. Then you'll see where we have the um, ambulances and the EMTs by the ramps, the crane on the other side of the ramp. Um, we will be leaving one of those um, ramp sections open for emergency use. And then you'll also notice uh, that's where the crane is and then the EMTs on the other side, utilizing uh, all of the area. This is just a picture of us, of us launching uh, one of the class one offshore boats. So the unique thing that we have at Sheboygan and the attraction uh, to bringing this event to the waterfront is the fact that we can have the longer course for the offshores off the beach area and then the circuit boats in the harbor area because the circuit boats are only 17 foot long and they need some calmer water. The offshore boats are used to the open water because they range from 32 foot to 50 foot. So they can handle the big water. But this gives us an opportunity to put the VIP hospitality area in that little blue section. And that gives you the best vantage point for both race courses throughout the weekend. One of the reasons that we are partnering the circuit boats with the offshore boats, it's a unique situation because we don't normally run together. But the nice thing about it is we can alternate the races so that way there'll be a lot of action on the water throughout the whole weekend for the fans and uh, the public. This just gives you uh, a look at the safety area, uh, which is outlined in red, and we'll use some patrol boats along the perimeter there to keep the public safe because they'll also be watching not only from land, but also spectators in their boats on the water. So the VIP area is, is important for the event in not only for Mercury Racing, bringing um, the VIPs, the customers, the employees, but also other sponsors to the event and giving them a place to host their uh, functions with their particular groups. Now we have got two possible locations. Um, we know that the pier construction is scheduled uh, with our scheduled to be finished on July 4th, um, but we have an alternative location, which is in the city green area right in front of uh, Blue Harbor Resort Hotel.
safety is the number one concern, not only for the boat racers, but for the fans is, who are watching not only from the shore, but also from the water. So we have got several patrol boats, several safety boats, uh, watercraft that will be on the course at all times. We've got EMTs in helicopters, uh, so that way we can get to our participants should they need our assistance. This just separates the different safety zones, how we go about it from um, the uh, conducting uh, club side of it to conduct the race. So that way we can better handle each situation and um, stay in contact, not only with our own team, but also the local um, Coast Guard and Water Patrol Service people. That just gives you a little view of how we will get the boats in and out from the pit area to the offshore course and the circuit course. That's the side of the ramp, uh, section of the ramp that we will keep open for emergency situations, should they arise. Well, I'm sure that um, we have some questions and by all means, if anybody, um, now's the time and, and we'll do our best to answer each one of them uh, of your concerns. And if we don't have the answer, we will do our best to get you a quick decision and get back to you on it. Thank you, Tim. This is Chad Pelashek from the city of Sheboygan. Um, we'll take questions in the chambers first, and then we'll take questions for those folks that are online um, afterwards, but a few uh, follow-up comments. We are aware that this is also the Coho Derby weekend. Um, we um, believe in discussions with city staff and the Department of Public Works that uh, we can accommodate those requests for Coho Derby as part of the A Street boat launch. Um, we've talked to visit Sheboygan about using their parking lot as overflow for that event. Um, and we're also talking with the owner of 14th Street Boat Launch to see if we can use that property because the boat ramps will be closed down uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so we will be doing a massive uh, public relations on that and getting information out on that. The fact that that's gonna be closed, but um, and then working with the groups that do cohort derby and those types of things as we move forward. So at this time, if anybody has any follow-up questions, I would ask you to step to the podium um, so that those online can hear them. This is also being taped and we will share the recording on the city's website after the event in case anybody wants to link to it and share it with other people. Um, but if you do have a question in the audience here, if you care to stand to the, uh, come up to the podium to ask your question. Now is your time. Hello, <laughs> um, I'm Amy Wilson from Visit Sheboygan, and I have two questions right off the top of my head. Um, what's the plan for public parking? It's the expected attendance from what I read is, could be up to 40,000 people. Tim, do you, I don't know if you want to, can you answer what the attendance might be from this first time event? I, th I believe that a, an event um, celebrating the 50th anniversary was going to draw probably between 25 and maybe as high as 40,000. Um, and that will probably be over a three day stretch. So it's not like you're gonna have everybody there at one time. So um, one, of the, one of the places, and Chad, you might be able to, to help me out with this as well. Um, if we can bring up the site map um, that has a surrounding area, then you might be able to tell us where we're gonna park because 
I know we discussed some of the grassy areas that are downtown that could be used for that. Um, and and I, my, my pointer doesn't point to any of it, but we have got um, the grassy area up by the pits. We also have the one that's down by the channel uh, that we talked about possibly putting some cars in as well. The, the armory site he's referring to. Yeah, so just, just this is Ryan again, uh, just a few things regarding parking. Um, this is one of the things that we're still hammering out the, the full details and we definitely recognize that um, it, it's, it's just gonna be busy and people might have to park a few blocks away, but we're also having conversations with our, our transit department uh, to utilize some shuttle-based services with the trolley um, so folks can get around. And obviously there's gonna be a lot of activity through certain times um, of the day. Um, so we're gonna be kind of building a schedule in terms of how we're gonna mitigate um, and advise for parking down there, so. Okay, my only request for that would be if we could get maps for specific areas. We'll load because, them up at your parking yeah, lot, Amy. We're yeah. already getting phone calls, <laughs> just so people know, so we can hand stuff out. And then I'm also wondering if I can get a copy of the maps in this presentation so that we can get our staff trained yep. for this. Okay, thank if you. If anyone needs a map or pictures, we have those, just let us know and get, like, uh, get us your information. Any other questions? Come on, we, we, we warmed up for this. We can probably, we can probably, uh, we'll probably put the link to the presentation and the link to the video on the city's website so you can grab it off of there. And we'll, we will also include on our, uh, the series, the P1 and the F1 websites, we'll also include those maps uh, so that you, the public will know where, where they can park and have the easiest access. So, but again, we are still working through some of that stuff right now. And, and just, just another note, hopping back a little bit um, uh, regarding access to the harbor. So when there are, I know we mentioned that there'll be some uh, racing in the harbor. So those will only be a, you know, two, in a couple minutes. I don't, I don't know the exact timeage of that, but those will just be for a, a few minutes um, in the harbor as well too. So access for the harbor will uh, will still be accessible throughout the day. Okay. Somebody could talk about what the schedule. <laughs> Tim, can you talk about what the schedule would look like for the racing in the harbor and for boat traffic that's coming in and out of the harbor? Yeah, let me um, let me pull that up real quick and. So when we, when we do the circuit racing um, in the harbor, the, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find that. Here we go. So the races are uh, approximately, you know, six, six, seven minutes for the heat races. And then the final um, will be 17 minutes plus one lap. And that will be on Sunday. Um, Chad, do you have a copy of the schedule that we sent over? Can we put that up? But basically... I, I don't know where the schedule is. Was it included in what Michelle sent? I believe so, but I, I don't know if it was. It, That's it fine. It should have been we attached. Can... We can, I don't know if we have that loaded up, but we'll make that available. And I don't, if you just want to talk about it now, we can share sure. afterwards. So far the harbor um, on, you know, normally we get going at seven or eight in the morning. Now that doesn't mean that we're necessarily on the water at that time, but we are getting things prepared for the day. So we, we don't have on Friday, um, we don't have anything on the water until uh, 12 o'clock. So, um, and then we are, we are done uh, with Formula One testing by four o'clock. And then on Saturday, you won't see anything on the water until um, 9.30. And then we will, the last race will be done by 5.30. Um, on Sunday, we have a 9.30 start for, for racing on the water and we will conclude by four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon.
Does that help answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you. We have another question. Um, I'm Jerry Slavens from uh, Sailing Education Association of Sheboygan. And uh, it was mentioned at the first meeting that uh, was held here, I don't remember when it was, late last fall, if there were availability of power boats uh, in the area for some of the uh, patrol boats. So we do have uh, boats available. I don't know if that's still needed. Uh, just asking questions. It's, it's definitely needed. We're hoping to come and meet with you when we're up there on the um, 27th or 28th of February. Um, we got some meetings lined up and we're just we're just getting them all scheduled right now. So we're hoping that we can meet with the Jerry and yep. kind of give you some more of a, some more of a outline of what we'll do, how we'll utilize um, the patrol boats that you have to, to make this a, a better, safer event. Perfect, thank you. Hi, Thomas Heckner, resident of the Ellis Historic Neighborhood District and a fan. So in everything that we've discussed so far, the race course looks beautiful and it runs along a wonderful bluff on the south side of town. I imagine that um, we're gonna have fee areas and non-fee areas. And I imagine that uh, South Lakeshore Drive is gonna be a nightmare when they're racing a uh, thousand yards offshore. How is that gonna be handled? Where do you want fans to be? And where are you gonna charge them to be? So our, our idea right now is the only charged area is gonna be the VIP um, hospitality area. So all on the city, um, city green space um, in front of the Blue Harbor Hotel that will all be free to the public uh, from, what I, from what I know right now. And Michelle, is, that's, that's everything that we talked about on that, correct? Correct. So the fans are gonna be able to spread out all along that area and even on the other side of the, um, let's say where the circuit boats are going on the, on the harbor. So, um, and, and definitely all out on the water but we've got more free area than we do pay area for sure. And, and just for the Lakeshore Drive question, we recognize it's gonna be busy. Uh, the analogy we're gonna use is it's gonna just be like the 4th of July watching the fireworks over there. So that's, that's how, not that we had a 4th of July meeting today, but uh, uh, that, that's just the anticipation of uh, the capacity that'll be. Sit. I mean, it's, the bluff is right there. They've got a little bit of shoreline mm -hmm. there. You can easily put seating to accommodate. And I have way more people than I think you would. I would believe that the Public Works Department can probably the pump. I would believe that the Public Works Department and our capabilities, we can probably make a note of that and see what we can do to accommodate that. Good suggestion. Gotta be like you know, you know Sheboygan stakes out their spot right before a parade or the Fourth of July. That's that's what you're gonna have to do. Yeah, Amy, we only get one question. I know. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> logistics, logistics. Um, how much uh, fly-in as opposed to drive-in traffic are we expecting for from the general audience? I'm asking simply because in our county, we have just over 2,000 hotel rooms. So I'm trying to figure out, and I already have people calling for accommodation, so we're trying to put the best radius together so that we can send people beyond our area because we're gonna be sold out pretty fast. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, we're gonna be sold out pretty fast, so let's book, you know, book your rooms now and... But do we have an idea of how much is fly-in traffic as opposed to drive-in or where most of the general out of town audience is coming from. Anyone online, any thoughts or suggestions or we'll have to make a note and do some more digging on that one. Okay, and then my other question is city logistics. Um, is there a plan um, for um, even food trucks along the, the lake shores or portable restrooms or, okay. There is a plan and we've got no, we've, we've, 
there is a plan and we've gotten a lot of inquiries and we've shared it with them and as the plan comes together, it's the, the plan is to include those at places where public can access them. We can't answer that at this stage, but okay. it, we've had inquiries ourselves that we're working on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we've had a, a lot of, uh, since the announcement, a lot of uh, excitement from local vendors, from local vendors and vendors from out of out of town as well too. So yeah, we gotta get the porta-potties uh, nailed down because porta-potties are hard to get um, in this day and age. So we're working on that still. Okay, so my name is Bailey Kupfer. I'm the general manager of Watershed Hotel. And we've already gotten a lot of calls about people, about parking for the boats, and maybe Tim knows this better. But um, the pit areas, are they allowed to park there all night and come in early and park there on Thursday or Wednesday? Um, we don't have the parking at our parking lot. We have a 24-hour street parking, um, but these boats are thousands upon thousands of dollars and we don't have the camera or security to be able to watch them 24 seven because we don't have somebody on site. So what's the game plan for people coming in early for me to tell my guests where they can park their boats because all I can tell them right now is called the marina and the marina isn't telling them anything, so. Well, what, <laughs> what we'll do is um, we will get that nailed down on the start time because we're just putting the team information together now and we'll include that with our team information on where they're supposed to put their boat prior to and um, how we can best accommodate everybody. But what we'll end up doing is we'll park them in the pits. And then once we do that, then we'll have security for the pit area to keep, um, to keep all of our participants' uh, equipment safe. And, you know, the public as well. Can I just get clarification on that last uh, uh, question? What did, what, did you mean the the boats as in the racing boats or the boats as in the, the fishing tournament boats? Uh, the racing. 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 Oh, okay, so, uh, thanks. We will address that with all the teams. When we send out um, a packet, basically email a packet out to all the teams that gives them all the particulars on each race site that we visit. So we'll include that information in there. All right, Mike, and, come and on the down. Boats the boats will be parked in the pits overnight. They'll 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 come in probably Thursday and they'll stay there until Sunday night before they leave. Right. I'm Mike Fro. I'm the uh, chair of the uh, city's Marina Parks and Forestry Commission and also a slipholder in the marina. And I have two questions. I'll mention that right up front. First of all, I wasn't real clear um, on that map where you're you're looking to have the uh, Oh, the, the, the party, it, it looked like it was South 8th Street, south of Pennsylvania Avenue, and then another area up around Fountain Park. Could I have some clarification on that? Yeah, the first, one option is around City Green and closing the streets down around City Green and using City Green, that's the preferred option. We will tour that when they're here later this month. And mm -hmm. the second option is to close off basically in front of Visit Sheboygan from the swing streets to the bridge. Okay. It was that other location, I couldn't quite. Okay. Yes, so on the top of this green. map, that's around City Green. Okay, yeah, that makes sense up there. Other question, uh, in the initial uh, contact, we talked about the parking lot for the marina. We have 191 seasonal slip holders. We're anticipating with this event, we're going to have quite a few transient uh, boats in Sheboygan. Um, it was our understanding that part of the marina parking lot would remain available for the slip holders. And the map that you were Scott, showing if, Scott, is if you using can go back the entire to the, parking lot. Scott, can you go to the site plan that's got um, like uh, blue and purple maybe or something? Yeah. And so if, nope, nope not that one, keep going. One more. So this one, you can see on this one that the top blue, uh, and I understand it's small, we'll share this with you, but basically the parking immediately outside the admin building um, down to like the dumpster would be still used for marina and then that whole blue area that's the current parking lot where YMCA and those types of things happen would be all reserved for marina staff, media, 
um, organizers related to the event. So the plan is to, Public Works will be working on a plan to help close off and and utilize those parking lots because they're gonna need a lot of this space and they're not gonna allow cars to be driving through the pit areas. So the marina people will, would be communicated to come through that city parking lot and go through that circle on the end and come in the back kind of way as to what the traffic would normally be. Perfect, thank you. Oh, so um, question was about how the Coast Guard is handling this so far. So we've brought the Coast Guard in um, early on when this was first getting discussed. Um, and uh, a lot of the entities, they basically have to pull a permit from them. So the Coast Guard is well aware. Uh, they were actually surprisingly very flexible and understanding about this. And they're excited uh, to, to be a partner in this too. So they're well aware um, and we're working with them. And we're, we're trying to also meet with them when we come into town at the end of February. Yep. Is there anyone online that has questions? There are a couple of questions in the chat. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, first is on Coho Derby weekend, the marina can get backed up for over an hour to launch a boat. The marina can handle six boats launching at once. How can fishermen be expected to use two or th possibly three launches all weekend? I think we're still working on on all of the different ramps that are available. Yeah, and I think and I, the ramps will be available. And yes, we expect some some backlogs. Um, my understanding is that is the the second weekend of the coho. I think it runs almost a full week is what I looked at the schedule. So yeah, um, yeah, it, there, there'll be potential some backups. Uh, again, my understanding is most of the fishing uh, vessels are out early in the morning, well out, well before anything with the race and anything like that for access through the Sheboygan River out to Lake Michigan. That should not be, be an issue. A little more from fishing. Uh, there are many charter services in Sheboygan that need access to their docks. What is the schedule to allow that traffic through? All that was mentioned was the length of the races within the harbor. Uh, please speak about how traffic will be allowed through. Well, what, when we're not racing in the harbor, we'll, you'll have access to go through the harbor then. So, um, I, and I don't know if you got to pull up that schedule or not, but once you have that schedule, then we can post it where everybody can see it to see those times. Any other questions, Scott? And those are the only that have been typed in the chat. Thank you. Anyone else in the house? So there's going to be certain times that the river gets closed. Yep. The Coast Guard will be the opener and closer of it. You go up there, right? Yeah. Just your <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I'm Jason Diener. I'm the commander of the Sheboygan Yacht Club. Just quick question. We're obviously almost ground zero for the boats in the harbor. With Penn Avenue the way it is, is there going to be any shutdown or way that it's going to impact our members? Staff, anything that we are not going to be able to get into our club or allow other people or guests and whatever into the club on that because it's going to be so busy. Right now, there's no anticipation closers, closings of Penn Avenue or Broughton Drive. Um, there will be some traffic back and forth on the Armory property because that will be some overflow staging and parking for trailers and boats related to these events, but we don't see any impact of access to the Yacht Club or anything, all that stuff will flow as it does today. There'll just be a lot of traffic. Perfect, thank you. All right, last call. Forever now, hold your peace. All right, well, thanks everybody again for, for coming out tonight. Obviously, it's only February, um, so all your questions and concerns will help us kind of build uh, more of the planning and information um, as we move forward on this. So we're excited. 
Um, and we hope that you all can stay in touch. I'm sure that we'll have more informational meetings as we get closer as well. So. So, yep. So well, Scott will put it on YouTube, and we'll get the video on YouTube. We'll get the PowerPoint and the schedule on there, and we will also have some contact information on there, so that if somebody has questions, you don't have to be funneled through the city. You can go right to the event organizers, and they can help you with whatever your questions are. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody.